Jesus promised just to say Jesus promised ought to bring excitement. You don't even have to finish the statement. We want to celebrate Jameer and his uh, football championship on Friday. Awesome. Stand up, my man. Come on. Look at him. Drama, 
Give me the truth. Don't focus on the drama. See, people will argue with you and get you all off base and try to focus on the drama and try to excuse themselves from the truth. By the time we read the story of Job and we all know a little bit about Job and we think it's a story about a man for us, a man who suffered, a man who had some problems, some pressures, and some pain, a man who had to go through heartaches and headaches and go through trauma and tragedy, and we think it's a story about a, a man named Job. Actually, the book of Job is a story about God. It's a story about God, and part of the reason why we have survived as a people is because we learned how to celebrate the story of God in our narrative. God in our drama. God in our scandal. So basically, from chapters 4 of Job to chapter 25, we have the narratives of his miserable comforter. Trying to fix and figure out and fashion why he had faults that caused him to fall and caused his frustration. Why did Job have to suffer? Job did not have a Sunday school superintendent. He didn't have a Sunday school class. Job didn't have a decalogue of a large religious writings. He did not have commentaries. He didn't have a library of spiritual wisdom. But somehow, Job and his general understanding of God created a special understanding of God because he knew that no matter what he was going through, the same God that blessed him was the God that would rescue him. And that's a word for somebody today that the same God that brought you from yesterday and yesteryear is the same God that's going to take you higher and you can praise him and live in the yet of your expression. I ain't got there yet, but yet I'm going to praise him. It hasn't come through yet, but yet I'm going to praise him. I have had my breakthrough yet, but yet I'm going to praise him. Things have not worked out yet the way that I want them to work out, but yet I'm going to praise him. I haven't overcome that tragedy and that pain yet, but yet I'm going to praise him. People have not liked me yet. They have not respected me yet. They have not given me credit yet, but yet I'm going to give God credit. I'm going to give God respect. I'm going to give God reverence. I'm going to praise him yet. I'm going to live if there anybody here that's living in the head clause of your life. He may not come when you want him, but you know when he show up, he'll be on time. Are you living in the head clause of your life that you know that your doctor is a doctor and your God is a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer and he's a friend and he's a keeper and you can say, well, God is forever. I'm going to trust in him. He's a man of prayer. 
That was his goodness, his, his, his godliness. And then his goods. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, five yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, servants and servants and servants and more servants, 10 children, seven sons and the children, and three daughters, land and property and possessions, popularity, position, prowess, pride, and prestige. In other words, young folk would say, he got it going on. Job's goodness, Job's godliness, Job's goods, Job's grief. Satan always sticks his head out. And he always tests you because you're on the right track. <laughs> Spurgeon said it like this. He said, God only had one son without sin. But he had no son without suffering. And suffering may be the indicator that you're doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> suffering is to the Cavaliers what Draymond Green is to the California team. Go to this thing. He's going to distract you in order to get you to take your eyes off of the prize. I got to quit. Satan says, and God invites Satan to the, the trauma chart of Job's life. Have you considered my servant? He blessed, yeah, he, you know, you got him in his position, you got her working on that job, you got her, she's been blessed, uh, she, you don't you don't cover her life, you don't heal her, you don't show her all these things, you don't did all this for him, you don't brought him off of drugs and brought him into this place, you don't took that alcohol out of that person, you don't you don't heal this person and prosper them. Oh yeah, they got reasons. Uh, you got them on a contract, you got them on a goody goody system so that they can come and praise you. He said, No, no, it don't work that way with me. God said. No, no, I'm not handing out favors. I'm handing out God's favor. And God's favor has a reverberation of a grace response. And they're not worshiping and praising me because of what they get out of me. They praise me for what they get from me and in them through their praise. And I want to talk to somebody today who say, I may not have a dime in my pocket. I may not be popular. I may not have but I've got a reason and I'm not ashamed, I'm not scared I'm unapologetic with my praise Amen. Amen. God allowed Satan to test Job yeah. I wish I could tell you you won't have to go through no test I wish I could cushion and put some bumpers on your face I wish that I could put some bumpers. Brother Brewer raced cars for years and he really is a living testimony because the things he did was dangerous, amen. Going at excessive speeds and popping willies and going through fire. Uh, he went through things to entertain because it was his gift and his skill set not to risk his life, but it was also a testimony that God will put bumpers on you when you do the right thing. And I want to talk to somebody today who says, I may not have the bumpers and the cushions of life, but God has kept me. You're not going to have all the bumpers. Can I get a witness here? God can give everybody big hills. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yeah, you ain't got all the cushion that you need. Amen. He didn't take it away from Job. Job had to go through it. Excuse me from the quiet Christian who come to church knowing that God did it. And have the audacious audacity to sit with hushed, halted, 
and hinder praise. We ought to be shouting. We listen. We listen. We listen. We all just, every now and then, let's practice. Come on, let's just practice right now. Can we practice? If you thought something for you, if you thought you weren't going to make it through the night, if you thought he wasn't going to bring you through that grief, if you thought he wasn't going to bless you with that job, if you thought he wasn't going to bring you through that education, if you thought he wasn't going to make it through another day, if there's anybody here who knows that you were rolled in the hospital, that you walked out of the hospital, if there's anybody here that can give him a shout and say, Lord, I praise you. Come on, you ain't shouted in a long time. Commit spiritual awalism. 
and gone and cursed God and died. But Job held on to his hope. He held on to his hope, and I got three reasons to tell you why. Because, and I'm done, I'm just giving you the points. If you're going to live in the yet praise moment, you got to know that yet. Somebody's phone is talking. And I can't say that. You got to know that yet, yet, somebody say yet. Yeah. And Pastor Jones is making an analogy for Conda Forever. Did y'all catch that? When Conda Forever is a good thing for black folk. Yeah. So we say it. By any means necessary. Black lives matter. No justice, no peace. Black power now. Conda Forever. My mind is focused. Crime on every hand. Chaos in the community, trouble on every hand, but I still see my people rising to a place of healing, deliverance, peace, justice, power, equality, and strength. Come to forever. Is there anybody here want to do that with me? Come to forever. Now don't wait for Denzel Washington to play the movie for you to do it. I want to be him. I'm going to beat him doing it. Amen. Listen. Yet praise gives you confidence beyond your chaos. It gives you confidence. See, the enemy wants to rob you from your confidence. Can I get a witness here? Some people say, well, I stopped cooking. Or I stopped sewing. Or I stopped... Uh, doing the things I used to do. But I stopped this and that. You, somebody came along and told you what you were doing didn't matter. I stopped thinking about entrepreneurship. I stopped thinking about uh, finishing school. I stopped thinking about uh, 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 dating and, and uh, uh, having a family or doing this or that. I stopped. Because you listened to someone who took confidence from you. That's what bullies do. Bullies wants to complex you, distress you, and depress you, and distract you so that they can disrupt you because they see something in you. I'm helping somebody. I don't know who I'm helping. As soon as you get out of church, somebody will call you and say, man, you want to get that drunk? Where are we going? What spot? Where's spot at today? What are we sipping on? What are we doing? What's up? What you do today? Oh, I just went to church. That's all. I went to confidence and you trying to take it away. My preacher preached to me and spoke life into my situation. He didn't even know I just came through this. He didn't know nothing about the hell I just been through. How in the world did he come with one sermon? Beyond the chaos. If Job had a trauma chart recommended practice, practice that you all should do is start when you were born up to now and draw a line and put in dates and write down what you've been through. Don't judge, don't blame, don't hate. Amen. Remember, truth over drama, right? And just look at why you act the way you act. Some of you are real nice to keep you upset. But just somebody don't agree with you.
I know y'all don't get that book now. <laughs> confidence. Okay, here's the second point. Job said, I got to keep my confidence beyond my chaos, but then I got to keep my testimony All right. All right. beyond my tragedy. All right. I got to keep my testimony because the enemy wants to dim your light. He wants to cut up your light. You are light shining, and he wants to stop your light from shining. And so what the enemy does is here you are shining bright. And he will come along. You left work Friday, but you showed up on Monday. <laughs> Last Thanksgiving was good. He set you up now, so you made it through that incident, but now you. And if he can get your testimony. He gets to God. If he gets your testimony, he goes, runs back to God. See, Satan could not, there's only one narrative, one conversation between Satan and God in the first chapter. Satan didn't have no more cameo appearances through the rest of the book. Satan didn't have no more invitation. He didn't have no more passes. He couldn't come. He couldn't download. He couldn't get in. He could not get a pass. He couldn't get a ticket. He couldn't buy a ticket. Amen. God said, I got it from here. And whatever you're going through, God says, I got it from here. Now, Satan, you can go to hell, and I got the rest of it. Testimony beyond your tragedy. Focus on the truth, not the drama. Amen. I know you've been through it's real talk. You've been through some stuff, and the tragedy is real, but you got to focus on the truth. Yes, the truth is a good thing, right? Oh, yeah. Truth gives us three things our history, our identity, and our dignity. Write that down. Truth gives us our history, our identity, and our dignity. Your history matters. Man came in here the other day, and man can tell you, he said, oh my God, so he saw me. Oh God, have you traced your own history? He's from Africa, from Ghana. He said, promise you, you're somewhere around Ghana. I said, how you gonna walk in and tell me? Man, I'm from East Cleveland. What you talking about? He said, no, I'm serious. But you know, it did make me think, Sister Williams. It made me say, well, you know, check that out. Because Kings is in Ghana. <laughs> Amen. I pastored several members from Ghana at my first church, and they were great men. So I said, Ghana's all right with me. But, but your history. Now, what was my last point? Read it back to me. Sister Michelle got the right answer. She was reading it right there. Focus on the what? Because why? That's it. Focus on the truth because it gives you your history, your identity, your dignity. When Sister um, Rosen talked about Inverness, Mississippi, and I said it wrong, but that's history. Testimony. Okay, so I say you want to. That, I, I taught that point good. The last point is 
He gives you trust beyond your trauma. Traumatic moments are real. You can't just say, it is what it is. And we as a people have to stop saying, we've been through so much, that's why we tough, that's why we did, that's why we had. We have to deal with life in the proper volume and everybody's different person ain't gonna cry for what you cry for. They're not gonna process grief the way you process grief. They're not going to deal with getting fired off their job the way you deal with getting fired off your job. They're not going to deal with being talked about and bullied the way you deal with it. I just punched the guy in the nose when I was bullied. I mean, I didn't, and they just called me crazy and stuff. They thought I was a troublemaker because I was afraid of the bully. I was so afraid that when they bullied on me, I just was looking for blood. Amen. I went to my first class reunion, 1986 Shaw High, on Payne Avenue with a clergy collar on, and they still wanted to jump me. I took a brother with me. I said, when I say it's time to go run to the car and start the job. After I blessed the potato salad and the food, they said, no, 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 I ain't getting away with none of the stuff he did in Shaw High. And your story matters. And that's why I use Mike Tyson. And that's why I say to you, I'm ready. I'm done. You got to live in the yet sometimes. Jesus was in the yet on Friday. Just do a song. Any time, I don't care. My hallelujah belongs to you or something. He was in the yet. We got him. We whipped him. Caiaphas, Annas, Harold, Pilate, the scribes, the chief and high priest. We got Jesus. Jesus says, Job's yet was a confirmation of how God will deal with my yet. We stretched him wide and hung him high yet. Dropped him low yet. Yeah. Playing a crown on his brow with 72 painful thorns. Yet. At the ninth hour, he died. Gave up the ghost. We were celebrating. But the earth was shaking with yet. Took his little body down and laid it in a borrowed tomb. Joseph of Armenthia gave Jesus the tomb and said, he can have my tomb. Put him in that tomb and pushed a boulder up to it and put two guarded soldiers 